What is up campers, glampers, crampers, and overlanders? Today we are on the base of Cleveland National Forest, um, at the base of the mountain on the campground on the south side. And uh, it is extremely windy out here. As you can see, my awning is going crazy. My tent's getting low, it's working on itself. Um, so I'm gonna, wow, this is gnarly. I'm gonna actually make coffee again, another coffee video, but this time I'm gonna be doing a review of the MSR wind burner. And I went with the wind burner because, I mean, wind is in the name as opposed to a jet boil. Um, it's supposed to be better in the wind, so let's see. I checked the weather this morning and there's like 20 mile an hour gusts of wind. Um, like luckily I have, like I said, my awning staked down. Even have my little short trip cooler on there to keep it down. Um, so let's make some coffee or attempt to and see if uh, this wind burner lives up to its name. All right guys, so we have the MSR Mountain Safety Research wind burner one liter. Um, basically it's to you know warm up liquids and coffee. Um, a lot of people go with the jet boil. I decided to go with this one because I figured in high wind, I would rather have something work than not work. So this is the first time I've been in this consistently gusty wind. Um, sorry for the shaky video, but my camera setup, I don't have my big tripod with me, so it's a little shaky. Um, hope you guys can hear me. Um, I'm using a wind cat on my mic, so, or a dead cat on my mic, so hopefully it works. So anyways, let's get into this. This is super compact. Um, it's super light too. A lot of backpackers use this unless they're, you know, um, dry hiking where they're not using any hot water to make food or coffee or anything, but I love coffee. So I'm gonna do this in the kind of backpackers configuration. Um, even though it does take the larger tanks, they're usually all the same threadedness. Um, but there's a uh, gas in here, so I'll show you, but it does not come with the um, ISO butane gas or whatever it is. But the small ones do fit in here. So this is what it comes with. I've been using this thing off and on for, man, probably like five years and it's still going strong. But let's see how it does in this wind. So it comes with a cap. The cap has um, kind of like a straining side right here as well as a, a pour side. And, uh, oh, this is gonna blow away. All right, so it comes with that. It comes with this stabilizing thing, which I never really use, but today I might use it. So it doesn't blow. I, I hope this thing doesn't blow over. Um, so I'll show you how that clips onto the gas. You have your actual, the main you know, meat and potatoes of it. This is where the gas comes in and the fire is on there. And then, like I said, you can keep one of these um, gases in there. Uh, this is four ounce, 3.9 ounce gases that stores inside of this thing uh, while it's all put together. So this base I'm gonna use right now, it kind of clips on. I am really hoping this whole thing doesn't blow over. When the, there's water in it, so it should be heavy. So this is how this sits. This is the stand to stabilize. So let's see if this works in this high wind. And then additionally, it comes with this little cup that it's pretty snugly on there. Let's see if I can get it off. There you go. Um, there are some measuring markings on there, 12 ounces, eight ounces, four ounces. It's also in milliliters too. So if you have, you're making a meal or whatever and you need a specific amount of water, this is gonna blow away. So I'm gonna put it in my bag. Let's pull the camera down. Oh my God. So there's that. So how this works is, this little on-off that controls, this one actually controls how um, how much gas it's giving, therefore how big your little flame in there is. So to store it down like this, to store it back in, you gotta loosen it. So I'm gonna tighten it so the gas isn't running when you screw it in. And then just, careful not to cross thread it, out, obviously, just put it in there. Tighten it up. So much dust being kicked around. I don't even know if I'm gonna make coffee because I literally feel grit in my teeth right now from just like all the dust and sand being kicked up. Um, so there we go. This is gonna sit like that. Let's fill this guy with water, and um, I'm just gonna keep the video going, and I'll do a you know a quick little speed up of how long it takes for this thing to boil water in wind like this. Um, elevation wise. 
I don't know what elevation we're at. We're definitely below 5,000 feet because I know the top of uh, Cleveland and Mount Laguna there is 5,000. Um, and it's morning, so the temperature is it's, uh, temperate. It's relatively warm. So let's fill this with water and see how long this thing takes to boil. All right, so we're back. I got this guy filled up to 28 ounces. On the inside of the cup, there are also measurement markings, um, which is really convenient. And I just thought of something. Um, so this does not have a self-igniter like some of the other uh, brands have. So you do have to bring a lighter of some sort of um, fire source. And it's so windy right now, I honestly don't know if a regular lighter is gonna cut it. Um, so we'll try it with a Bic in this high wind um, and see if that works. If not, I also have these, whoa, the light is blowing away. I also have these torches, mini torches that I picked up from Amazon that are supposed to do good in wind. So let's try with the Bic first and then uh, go from there. And I'll kind of show you if, if the camera will pick it up. Along here, there is this wire that goes right on the side of here. It's a small, really thin wire. And you can't really see the flame on this sometimes when it's lit, especially if you're using it during the day. But that wire is designed so when it is lit, that wire will glow orange so that you can see that you're, it's lit and that it's a safety feature. So if it's lit and you, you don't have to touch it to see if it's lit or feel it with your hands. So let's give it, turn the gas on and uh, see if this will light with the Bic. Um, I kind of want to try to wait for a big gust. Let's just try it to see. See how good the Bic works. Gas is on. It lit. Um, it, it went off. <laughs> so let's tr let's turn the gas on a little bit higher. All right. Oh, it, lit. it went off. Okay. So problem right now. <laughs> let's see if we light it and then put this on pretty quickly because this is supposed to filter out some of the wind. The only thing is that I'm realizing now is if it goes off when this is on, you can no longer see this little wire to see if the wind burner is actually on. Um, but let's just, let's go through this together. Let's see this first time. So I'm gonna light it and then put this on really quick. Uh, gas on. It's not lighting. <laughs> Let's try again. All right. All right, if gas is on. Let's put this on here. It's still lit. It's going, all right. Oh, there goes the lid. So I'm gonna boil this with the lid on. So it boils a little faster. I'm gonna turn the gas all the way up. It still is on, I can feel the heat. Uh, a lot of times I, I boil without the lid and the reason being, I notice when this whole thing gets hot and the lid also heats up, it heats up the plastic in the lid and then when you're pouring, the lid doesn't stay on really snug. So if you're not in these crazy wind conditions or you're not in a hurry, um, I would recommend boiling without, if you're gonna pour it into like a, a pour over coffee or whatever, Boil without the lid on and once it's boiled pop the lid on because the lid will be cool and when you clamp it on it'll actually stay and it's a lot easier to pour through either of the spouts. And so the brunt of the wind is right here. It's coming from the east direction so I mean the wind is hitting this thing. Starting to see bubbles. I'm surprised it worked with the, the Bic. Um, another thing that you could carry, and I'll put, uh, I don't know, if, uh, I think they do have these on Amazon, but it just needs a spark, really. You don't need a Bic, so if you're looking for it to cut weight or just to have something a little different, multi-faceted tool. I picked up one of these, I think in Joshua Tree National Park, but it's a carabiner with a flint on it. Um, that sparks like that. So that will also light this if you don't 
have a lighter um, or any type of, you know, the magnesium flint things that have the strikers on them, those will work um, with this as well. All right, it's boiling pretty good. Yeah, well, I'm getting the top now. Wow, and I'm, um, all right, this thing is pretty solid as far as staying upright. I don't know if you can see it because the camera's shaking, but this is like, a tiny bit is uh, moving. I can see the flame inside. It's out of boil. See, you can see the steam starting to come out the top. Oh, yeah, that's the, okay, so. The bubbles are big enough to start hitting the lid. So, now that it's calmed down a little bit. Wow, I am actually really impressed. Aside from that quick um, mishap where the, the, the flame or the heat was going off because you can't really see the flame in the daytime. Like I said, that's why you keep an eye on that little wire that they have in there. Um, so it looks like the trick if you're in high wind to do this is to literally fill your water, light it, turn the gas on, light it, and then drop this on right on top. Because once this is on on top, you can see all these little notches around it. I'm, I'm assuming that's the design to keep the wind out, but keep, you know, keep all the heat in. So this worked really well. Um, so pick one up. I, I, I'm super stoked with my purchase. I mean, this is, you know, kind of a pricey, a pricey purchase. And uh, I went with the wind burner and it lived up to its name today. Um, so yeah, check it out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.